Hello and welcome to Shepherd of the Valley's online worship service. I'm Pastor Jeremy Belter. I have the privilege of serving the Candelas campus. We're thankful that you found us this morning and that we have the opportunity to share God's word with you. For those of you that are new with us today that are watching online, uh, below the video in the description, you'll find some tools necessary and helpful for the worship service. I invite you to join along with us, um, with our little congregation group that we have here, in the singing and the responses. You'll see those on the screen. If you'd like a copy of the worship folder, you can find the link for that in the description. In our worship folder now, too, you'll also find uh, Bible study questions for our weekly online connect groups that meet. So if you'd like to have those Bible study questions and work through them on your own, you're welcome to download that. There in that description, you'll also find a digital connection card. If you live in the Arvada area, you are looking for a church, we can be of any help to you as a, as a congregation. Please fill that out and let us know. And then finally, for our members, if you are interested in online giving, you'll find the, gift, the uh, link for that there as well. Today is Ascension. Well, it was actually last Thursday. That's when um, the Christian church marks the Ascension of our Lord. We're celebrating it today. And, and what we're going to see today is, is how the Ascended Lord Jesus continues to work out everything for the good of his people. We're going to see through the life of the Apostle Paul how God said no to him. We're going to, we're going to look at our own life and see how at times, yeah, God says no to us and our plans fall apart and they fall through. It's not because God is saying no to you. It's because he's saying yes to a better plan that he has in place. What a comfort that is, and we'll, we'll hear more about that throughout the course of the worship service. So let's begin worshiping our Savior God. We're going to sing two verses of the song, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus. His Father's plan of salvation, the salvation of the world. God's Son came in humility to rescue us from our sin. Let us, in humility, approach our Savior and ask Him to forgive us. Lord Jesus, hear me, for I have sinned. My life does not match your holy standards. You came to this earth, rescue me from my own sin, and I pray you would hear me, I cry, for mercy. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Your Savior Jesus did accomplish his Father's plan of salvation, and so your sins are removed. 
Christ ascended amid shouts of joy and triumph to take up his position as your intercessor now and forever. Christ hears your prayer and because of his mercy declares you are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing to him a song of praise. Let's join in the song of praise. sermon is, is for you. So the other day I was driving to the grocery store and I, I got to one street and I had this sign right in front of me. Do you, you see it? Do you know what that word is? I was driving and this big, huge, it was, it was much bigger than this, was right there in front of the, right in front of my car. It says detour. You know what a detour is? It means that you can't go the way you planned. So when I went to the grocery store and I saw this sign, I had to, to take a right, and then I could go straight, and then I could take another left, and then I eventually got to the grocery store. I got to my destination. I was a little frustrated that I, I had to take a detour. I had a certain way I wanted to go, but at the end of the day, it was all right. Because even though I planned to go one way, I still got to the same place I wanted to go. I just went in a different path. Today we're going to hear about a man named Paul. And Paul was a great missionary. He loved to tell people about Jesus. And he planned to go to this very big city and tell lots of people about Jesus. And then God said, no. I wonder how Paul felt when that happened. But you know what? When, even though God had looked like God put up a detour sign or even a stop sign for Paul... It's because he wanted him to go a different way. You see, Paul had the opportunity to tell people about Jesus. He just had to go a different way to do it. And eventually, he got to do the thing he wanted to do just in a different place. He got to tell a whole different group of people that needed to be saved, that needed to be forgiven. God just had a different plan, a different way of getting there. You'll find at times in life it happens to you. Perhaps you want to do a particular thing, you want to get to a particular spot, or you have a plan... But then God puts up one of these. I always want you to remember that, that God wants you to be in heaven with him. He wants you to, to be close to him in faith. And so when God puts up a detour sign and, and sends you on a different path than you anticipated, don't worry about it. Don't fear. Because God's going to get you to heaven. He's going to make sure of it. Even if it's not the way you originally planned. All right, let's fold our hands and we're going to say a prayer to God. You can repeat the line after me, kids. Dear God, thank you for loving me and sending your son Jesus to take away all my sins. Help me to trust you no matter what happens in life. Amen. All right, thanks for your attention. We're going to continue with two scripture lessons now. The, the first scripture lesson comes from the book of Acts, chapter 16, and we're going to focus on some of these verses in the sermon this morning. 
Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they, entered, they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, Come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. From Troas, we put out to sea and sailed straight for Samothrace. The next day, we went on to Neapolis. From there, we traveled to Philippi, a Roman colony and the leading city of that district of Macedonia. And we stayed there several days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river, where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman from the city of Thyatira named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. This is God's word. Gospel for today is Luke's account of Jesus' ascension into heaven, from Luke chapter 24. Jesus said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out of the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they stayed continually at the temple. Praising God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to you, to you O Christ. Christ. Let's continue with the song of the day. We're going to sing two verses of the song, A Hymn of Glory. Let us sing.
with you always. Amen. The portion of God's Word that we're going to uh, look at this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 16, beginning at verse 6. There we meet a man named Paul. Paul had plans, big plans, godly plans, to share the gospel of Jesus with a lot of people. And then God said no. Maybe I should back up just a little bit. So when we meet Paul the first time in the book of Acts, he's known as Saul, and he's a persecutor of the Christian church. He arrests Christians and puts them into jail simply because they believe in Jesus as their Savior. But after Paul is converted, the Lord Jesus calls him into ministry, calls him to be a missionary, to take the gospel message into all different parts of the world. And some say that Paul is, without question, the greatest missionary the Christian church has ever seen and ever had. The Apostle Paul went on what we call his first missionary journey. He traveled through the modern-day country of Turkey. And along the way, he shared the gospel in cities and with people that had never heard of the true God before. And the Lord blessed Paul's ministry. Churches started popping up, and he put pastors or elders over the top of those churches to take care of the people. And then he'd move on to the next city. It wasn't all rosy. It wasn't all easy. There were threats to Paul's life along the way. There were disappointments. But by and large, generally speaking, you look at Paul's first missionary journey, and it was a success. The Lord blessed the message. When Paul had finished his first missionary journey, he went to the city of Jerusalem because there was a dispute uh, that was beginning to arise in the Christian church. Paul and the apostles of Jesus had been preaching that the only way to salvation is through faith in Jesus Christ. It's a free gift. It's not because of works. But there were some in the Christian church that were starting to say, yeah, but if you weren't a a Jewish believer before, in other words, if you were a Gentile and you came to faith in Jesus, you still needed to follow the Old Testament ceremonial laws. There were things you needed to do in order to be saved. So the apostles of Jesus convened what you might call a big church convention, a church council, to decide this. And the apostles concluded on the basis of God's word, there's only one way to salvation. It's a free gift through faith in Jesus Christ. You don't need to follow any rules or any laws to be saved. So what they did was put a, a stamp of approval on Paul's ministry and his message. And then they told Paul to go back and, and tell the churches what they had decided So Paul and Barnabas set out for Antioch. Paul and Barnabas had gone on the first missionary journey, and they were ready to leave, but then something sad happened. Paul and Barnabas got into a heated debate about who they were going to take on their mission trip with them. It got so heated, in fact, that Paul and Barnabas, this dynamic duo of a mission team, split up. Barnabas went his own way to do the Lord's work, and Paul went his Paul had a new partner now, a man named Silas. And along the way, they picked up two new companions for their mission trip, a man named Timothy and Luke. So already at the beginning of the second missionary journey, things start out very unexpectedly, but then things begin to roll. Paul goes back to these different congregations that he had started in the modern-day country of Turkey, the region of Galatia and Phrygia, and he starts sharing the message with them, and their numbers grow. He strengthens the church with the message, and he's about to turn his attention to a new city that he's never been to before to share the gospel, and then this happens. Let's take a look at Acts chapter 6. We're going to look at verses 6 through 8 to begin. Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. This is God's Word. Paul had a big plan. So in in your mind, I want you to imagine the modern-day country of Turkey. And and right in the middle of ancient times was this region called Phrygia and Galatia. And that's where Paul was, was working. But to the west was a province called Asia. And on the very western side of that, on the seacoast, on the Aegean Sea, was a huge city called Ephesus. 
Ephesus was a multi-ethnic, multicultural, seafaring town. A lot of sea traders would have come to Ephesus and then leave. When Paul saw that city, he saw an opportunity to, to gather a huge audience for the gospel. And if there were some people that were there trading, that were there from out of town, they would hear the gospel and believe. They would take the message and they would take it to their, their homeland where they had come from. Paul is ready to go to Asia. He's ready to, to go to this big city of Ephesus. And then Luke tells us that the Holy Spirit said no. So, not to be deterred, the Apostle Paul turned his direction to the north and to the east, to a, a territory, a senatorial province, a very wealthy province called Bithynia. But the Spirit of God said no. And so the Apostle Paul and his companions, they went down to the city of Troas, it's the ancient city of Troy, and they sat there and didn't know exactly what to do. What do you think was going through Paul's mind as the Holy Spirit said, no, no. I mean, the Holy Spirit who had called him into ministry, who said, you are going to be a, God, a, a missionary to the Gentiles. We don't really know exactly what Paul was thinking, because it's not in Luke didn't record it for us, but... We can imagine Paul being a human. There was a little bit of frustration. Maybe some confusion. Why would God not allow this? Why, why would God stand in our way of, of doing what he has asked us to do? Maybe there was a little bit of anger. Have you been in Paul's shoes before? <laughs> I mean, if you've been alive for the last 68 weeks, you've seen your plans fall apart? Yeah. Whether it's graduation plans, travel plans, uh, family plans, visit plans, holiday plans, gathering plans, business plans, investment plans, whatever plans you had, they've fallen apart like crazy. But we know that from experience, don't we? We didn't just learn that recently, that plans can fall apart because of the coronavirus. We've seen it happen in our life before. Things that we've wanted to do, things with the best of intention. Not sinning, not doing something that's contrary to what God has asked us to do in the Ten Commandments, but making a plan and then, and then wanting to do it only to see it fall apart or to see so many roadblocks in the way becomes fairly obvious God is saying no. And how do we react when that happens? We get angry. Maybe we even lash out at God and blame God. Why would you do this to me? What, why would you stand in my way? Why won't you let me get to this thing that I want to get to and do? Maybe we just stop believing for a while. We just walk away from God. What do we do when God says no? The first thing that you and I need to do is repent. We need to repent of the fact that we get angry at God when, when he says no, when our plans don't work out, we, we want to be in control, and we finally realize, I'm not God, and we get angry at God for being God, we need to repent. We need to repent for, for not trusting and submitting to his will in our life. And after we've repented of those sins, we need to remember and trust in the one who says no. Remember who it is that's saying no to you. It's not your enemy. It's your friend. It's not someone who's disappointed in you. It's someone who delights in you. It, it's not somebody who condemns you. It's somebody who saved you. The one who says no is your Savior Jesus, who in his grace and mercy came to this world to die on a cross for you, who rose from the dead for you, who triumphantly rose from the dead so that you could live forever with him in heaven. That's who says no to you. The one who says no to you is the Savior Jesus, who ascended back into heaven. Last Thursday, the Christian church marked the 40th day after Easter as the ascension of our Lord. And, and on that day when Jesus ascended back to heaven, you, you heard it at the beginning of the service, he ascended amid shouts of joy. The angels welcomed him back with praise and honor. They gave him a standing ovation and clapped their hands because Jesus had accomplished everything the Father had asked him to do. He had won salvation for you. He had prepared the spot in heaven for you. He had won salvation so that you could be with him forever. 
And there in heaven, he took up the full use of his heavenly power and authority. And now, Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. He is in control and in charge of everything. The Apostle Paul wrote about that. In the book of Ephesians, we're going to take a look at that verse in a second. Yeah, the same Ephesus that Paul tried to get to, he actually got to it later at the end of his second missionary journey. And he had great success there by the Lord's hand of blessing. Take a look at Ephesians chapter 1 and see what Paul says about Jesus and his rule in our lives today. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22. God also placed all things under his feet and made him head over everything for the church. Jesus is in charge of everything. There's nothing that's out of his control. He is ruler over all things. And did you hear what he uses that power for? For the benefit of the church. For you. When God says no, it's because he has a better plan in place. It's because he has something better in mind. It's because God has a goal that you would be with him forever in heaven. That you would remain in faith and get closer to him in faith. And so God is going to do whatever is necessary to make sure you stay on that path. When God says no, it's because he has a better plan in place. And that's precisely what the Apostle Paul learned. Take a look at Acts chapter 16. In verses 9 and 10, we hear this. During the night when they were in Troas, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, Come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So Paul is on the western edge of modern-day Turkey. He's in the city of Troas. And he has this vision from God. A man in Macedonia, which is across the Aegean Sea. Macedonia is a, a region in Greece calling for help. And so the Apostle Paul and his companions, they get on a ship and they sail across. And you know what better plan God had in mind? The gospel crossed from Asia to Europe. And hundreds of years later, that gospel message would cross from Europe to a place even farther west called North America. And hundreds of years after that, the gospel message would find its way to you. God said no to Paul because his better plan in mind, part of it, was that you would hear the gospel, that you would be saved. God said no because he had a better plan in place. And, and just on that second missionary journey, when Paul got across the sea to, to Philippi, he, he met up with a woman named Lydia. And the Lord opened her heart to respond to the gospel. She believed in the Lord Jesus. She was brought to faith. And Lydia was a very influential woman. She was a wealthy woman who could get what wealthy people wanted. Purple cloth. And so her means of income now will become a source of, of support for the Apostle Paul and his ministry. When God says no, he has a better plan in place. And then later on in Acts chapter 16, in the city of Philippi, the Apostle Paul and Silas find themselves flogged and jailed later on because of something good they had done. During the course of that night in jail, they, they sang hymns and psalms. After an earthquake had opened up all the doors of the jail, the jailer who was in charge of that jail was about to take his own life. The Apostle Paul rushed and stopped him from doing it. And during the course of their conversation that night, the jailer and his entire household, however many people that was, family, kids, servants, whomever, they were all baptized and saved. All because God said no. When God says no, it's because he has a better plan in place. And I hope that you take that truth and put it into your heart and take it with you every single day. Dear friends, you have a God who says to you, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. 
Your God has given you hope through Jesus Christ. He has given you a future in heaven. You have that locked up and given to you, dear friends. And so God is going to do whatever is necessary to make sure that you get closer to him in faith and closer to his heaven. And so when God says no, don't, ang- don't get angry at him. Don't lash out at him. But thank him. Love him. And then expect a better plan from God. Does that surprise you? Does it surprise you that God does that? That that he has a better plan in place? I think it does many times. Just a few weeks ago, I I talked about my my little daughter, or toddler, and she was having the issue of getting up too early. And so we put this little lamp on her dresser. And every morning at 7 a.m., it lights up. And that's the indication for her that she can get out of bed. So even if she wakes up at 5.30, she knows I have to lay here in bed, until that light goes on. Someday when she's older, I'm going to ask her, what is it like to wait for something to happen and you you don't know exactly when it's going to happen because you don't know how to tell time. I wonder how excruciating that is for her at times to wait. But every day she comes downstairs, she says almost the exact same thing to me. At 7 a.m., the door opens, she walks down the steps and says, Daddy, the light came on again. Daddy, the light came on again. She's excited, she's joyful, And she's also always a little bit surprised that it happens again. Day after day, 7 a.m., the light goes on, and she can come downstairs. When your plans fall apart, when God says no, dear friends, don't be surprised. There's a better plan in place. You worship a God who is in the business of working things out for your good. You worship a God who is in the business of making sure that you get to heaven. You worship a God who is so great and so wonderful and so almighty that he would come to earth to be your savior so that you could ascend from heaven, from earth to heaven. Dear friends, rejoice that when God says no, it's because he has a better plan in place. Amen. Let's continue with with one more verse of the song, A Hymn of Glory, Let Us Sing. Today we also thank you for the men and women who have paid the ultimate sacrifice by laying down their life to preserve the freedoms in our country. On this Memorial Day weekend, may their sacrifice lead us to sacrifice for those around us in need or in trouble. Make us a blessing in whatever way is needed. We ask this, Lord and Savior, because you are gracious and promise to hear us. And now hear us as we pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for joining us for our online worship service. You can learn more about our congregation at sblcandelas.org. Don't forget to take, out, take an opportunity to fill out the digital connection card in the description below. We wish you God's richest blessings on your week. Goodbye. Thank you.